So good morning and welcome to the next session of this marathon conference on fear of art. Uh, it's very cold out, so you're all to be congratulated for having gotten here nevertheless. And I, it's my pleasure, I, I'm going to just simply quickly turn the uh, mic over to my colleague Elsbieta Matinia, who is a professor in the Department of Sociology at the New School for Social Research. She herself is in exile uh, from Poland. She was stranded here when martial law was uh, imposed in the 1981 and uh, has been here ever since. She couldn't go back. And, uh, and we've been lucky to have her and particularly lucky to have her here at the New School where she runs an, an extraordinary institute or center called the Trans-Regional Center for Democracy. Uh, it's my pleasure to now give this to Elspieta Matinia. Um, good morning, everybody. A um, few words, those of you who were here yesterday, I uh, heard, heard different versions of it, so this would be my version of uh, why do we have this conference and why, why do we have it here uh, at this university, at the new school. And the school um, was established on the basis of two principles in 1919. The president of the new school yesterday said uh, gently that um, a couple of scholars, or actually a group of scholars, progressive, uh, scholars in social science, sciences came downtown from, from the university up north and because uh, uh, of the issues of academic freedom. So the questions of freedom or free expression, but also free expression within the walls of academia was very important for establishing um, the, this very uh, university. It was just after the war, it was just after the First World War. And, um, and the scholars decided that they want to have a place where they can actually um, and develop critical thinking and, uh, and be able to, uh, to do that kind of research they wanted to do, not dictated by the university administration. Hence, they came downtown and they said, we are going to have a, a new university, a different university, and they established something which they called New School, the New School for Social Research, and that's why we are here. Um, in 1933, soon after um, uh, the coup in Germany, after Hitler's, uh, Hitler came to power, um, a lot of uh, scholars, um, first in Germany, then in Austria, but then all over Europe, um, have been uh, later all, all over Europe, which uh, found itself under, uh, under the Nazi occupation, um, were purged from the universities and they fired. They didn't have a way to live or to think. And uh, this university became for them home. Um, initially, it was thought it would be brief. It would be maybe for a year. And in 1933, the first group of, uh, um, of exiles from Germany, philosophers, sociologists, uh, psychologists arrived here. Um, later on, they were joined by artists. And that's how the graduate faculty of the New School for Social Research have been formed, that part of the school that both Arian and I am, uh, we are part of. And this is a part of the uh, university, which is now called the New School, and our part is called the New School for Social Research. Um, I'm talking about it because um, the question of rescue and the question of uh, helping people in, in different uh, times and helping scholars, but also helping artists, helping them to find themselves at home was uh, very much a part of that uh, of the mission of this university. And um, right here in this building, actually in the underground, there was a theater space. There is still a theater space, which was uh, um, which which was uh, uh, organized into a first uh, an important. Uh, a set of performances by Erwin Piskator, who was another uh, artist uh, exiled from uh, Nazi-occupied Europe. Um, 
that's that's the that's the general introduction. But what is perhaps more important is whom do we have here today? And I'm looking at my uh, friends here sitting, uh, and I think that this is a, a powerful uh, a woman's representation of uh, uh, of, uh, of artists, and, and both of them are artists in exile. Um, um, from uh, who arrived here from uh, in different times from two different countries, um, and uh, let me just introduce Naila Alatrash, uh, who is a Syrian theater director and a Sy Syrian playwright and a Syrian actor, who um, who uh, who was teaching and uh, creating plays within a genre that she called um, within a format that she calls uh, a critical theater when the possibilities of, uh, of, of doing it was, uh, became slimmer, she left and she ended up in the United States, thank God, way before uh, the war uh, have, um, uh, began in Syria. Both Naila and uh, our, uh, our second uh, uh, friend, our second presenter, Cho Eat, come from the places which uh, in the last uh, um, um, who, that recently, in the case of um, Cho It, in the last uh, several decades, became uh, states uh, producing a large number of refugees, states of refugees. Um, uh, Cho, Cho uh, It is from Burma. Going very quickly um, uh, back to, to Naila, I just wanted to say that she um, arrived here in 2004. And um, since she arrived, she actually moved fairly quickly to, to work uh, on a theater plays, to perform and to produce theater plays. She is associated with the um, New York University, uh, with the um, uh, Tisch School of um, Arts at, at NYU. Uh, when uh, I finish this introduction, we will be actually seeing uh, two uh, works um, captured by video. The piece um, that is uh, performed, played, performed, and directed by Naila uh, and Alatrash is called The Forbidden Science Monologue. It's a theater performance based on, on real stories of threatened scholars. Um, let me move quickly to uh, Cho It. Cho It was born in Rangoon. Uh, she was born and educated actually in Burma. And she is a, a Burmese a multimedia artist, but also a painter um, and, and performer whose work has been widely recognized and um, shown and covered by um, um, international press. Um, both our guests today are quite well known, and uh, there is a lot of stuff that you can read um, about them. Um, uh, the easiest, of course, it's available on, on the internet. But going back, back to uh, Cho Eat, um, um, in Asian Art uh, Now, in Art Forum, uh, but also in New York Times. She left uh, her country in 2009 um, after, giving, after being arrested for giving a, a, a street performance along with her friend, something which looked rather innocent on the busy uh, uh, street in, uh, in Yangon, they were selling um, a little trinkets, uh, candies and, 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 and pieces of, uh, of, uh, of, of rib ribbons um, for very little money or for no money, whatever, to, to make a point of an incredibly inflated at that time and criminally inflated pre, uh, prices uh, imposed by the government um, in, uh, in Burma. She was arrested, she eventually left um, and arrived here in 2009. Uh, we will be seeing at the, um, her uh, video installation uh, produced uh, uh, in, um, in Buffalo, New York in 2012. Um, so we will see the, the, the video material, and after, after that, we will have a conversation. I hope that they will be able to comment on each other um, work, and uh, we'll have a conversation between us, and I'm hoping that um, you will be able to join us in it. Thank you.
the gate of this old prison. I've come again to break the teeth and claws of this man-eating monster we call life. I've come again to puncture the glory of the cosmos, which mercilessly destroys the humans. I am the foul. Hunting down the birds of black omen before their flies. I gave my word at the outset to give my life with no qualms. I gave my word at the outset to give my life with no qualms. Rumi, 1207. To give my life with no qualms. In Iran, demonstrations have broken out in order to restore democracy. Unfortunately, demonstrators were attacked by the police. It resulted in two deaths, and hundreds of demonstrators were arrested. Yesterday, the Iranian justice announced the hanging of two dissidents. Yesterday, one of them was already hung in Tehran. The Iranian police has confirmed a casualty of yesterday's protests. Uh, one person was victimized by the jihadists during yesterday's shooting. The opposition denies that it is responsible for the victim and blames the police. The police crushed the protesters and used bullets and tear gas against them. Today, Iranian media announced that a motorcyclist has stuck a bomb on the car of a scientist. The nuclear scientist, a 32-year-old man, died. I haven't been in prison, but I have been interrogated. I have felt threatened. I have been a 
afraid. I have sat in the dark out of fear of being seen. My heart has skipped as many beats as there are cars in Tehran. But I don't know what I am afraid of. Is it real? Is it being afraid of being afraid? Always the certainty of doubt. Let me introduce myself so the class may start. Professor Kanute, Kanute, from Congo, a country you have only heard about for the wrong reasons. Corruption, Congo was, is my country. Got that? A philosopher, studied in London, received my doctorate in Tokyo. I am a real Plato man. I believe that although some people behave badly, deep down you and you, and even you, are capable of good behavior. No? That's why. I like to talk and discuss with people, with my students. You see, an intellectual learns every day. You from me and the other way around. Let me present you a question that has been fascinating me for years right from the moment I occupied myself with philosophy. The question everything revolves around that is, what is a good society? Hmm? Take your time to think. Our friend Plato said, thinking is the talking of the soul with itself. Got that? A good society is a free democratic society. Everyone should live in harmony and there are equal opportunities for everyone. Of course, those are not my words, but the words of the unforgettable Nelson Mandela. Democracy. Interestingly, the government of Congo claims to be a democracy. One of the few things in which Aristotle was right was this. The gods do like a joke. I am a scientist. I take responsibility. I see poverty. I 
see the great gap between classes. I see the rich conservatives. I see the poor pariahs. I see discrimination, exclusion, and equality. It is in our legislation, in our social amenities, education, religion. It's in our society. in our system, women have rights, children have rights, the UNDP is not a criminal organization. I am an activist. I have never been in prison, but I have been interrogated. Innumerable times I have been interrogated. Why do you work for the NGOs? Why do you work with refugees? Why do you work with women? Why do you work with children? It takes hours, I left. I'm not a victim. I can work in a cafe. But I left. I left. I can always go back. I can always work in a cafe. My friends are there. I have left them behind. My friends do understand. Most of them, not all. My friends get arrested. My friends get interrogated. My friends get brought in and I am here. I am here. work there. I'm not allowed to work there. I'm being threatened, therefore I am here. But can I, can I leave them behind? Just like that. work. If only I really could work, I could go back. Stay here and work. Or Go back and do nothing. Work in a cafe. I 
I am a scientist. Morakami, I can see the smile on your face once you have opened the envelope. Yes, your old eyes see it right. This letter contains twice as many stamps as the last one. This is the price of a government that does not believe in economic patterns. I should have written to you sooner, Morikami. But you are a dangerous man. First, there is this friendly, tempting invitation. Only two weeks, Professor Canute. Two weeks only, come to Tokyo. And then, you spoil me by offering brilliant students, good discussion, sushi. During last night, you show me you are not a professor in philosophy. You are a karaoke professor. Take me down to your paradise city, Guns N' Roses. <laughs> Take me down to the paradise city where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Take me home. Take me down to the paradise city where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Take me home. Going back means not being able to do anything. Nothing with women's rights. Nothing with children's rights. Nothing with politics. What remains? What remains is hope. The hope that something will change. And then I can go back and do something, not just work in a cafe. Here. Here, I'm no threat to the government. Here, it's beautiful here. It's almost like a fairy tale. It is a carnival. Happy people, nice people, a feast. I wish. and the quiet in myself to enjoy this all. But it's so distant from reality. 
my reality. It's not my world. My head is somewhere else. No. No. I, I don't see. What I can do here. No. I don't see. I can contribute here.
Yes. Okay. So this is not a, not not yet a question thing, but I like I I, yeah. I I I know that both of you were having a little pieces prepared to present to us, uh, both as art, but also a, and, and some words to to share. Um, about these monologues, um, they were connected with a very important moment in my life. Mm, towards the end of uh, August in 2012, I received uh, an, um, an offer of uh, a job opportunity to teach in one of the universities in Norway uh, through SAR, the Scholars at Risk. Um, it's a network which uh, uh, helps 
um, scholars from over the world who are threatened and provides them with um, an environment where they can um, resume and continue their work uh, far from the threat of their governments. Um, uh, my arrival in Norway coincided with the uh, uh, beginning of the um, a new academic year. Uh, celebrations were uh, held all around. Uh, students were happy meeting their parents. You know, it's the, the, the new uh, uh, academic year. Uh, the, 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 the change in the scenery was a huge and confusing for me, for a person like me, who came from the midst of a war zone. Uh, and I asked myself, what am I doing here? And for the first three months, I was haunted by a kind of feelings of guilt, of uh, anxiety, worry about the people that uh, I have left behind, my friends, family, uh, 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 facing one of the most brutal uh, uh, extermination assault against mankind and land. And I was battling uh, uh, against these uh, uh, feelings, which sometimes paralyzed me, literally paralyzed me, and prevented me from being, or, or, or to fully uh, being engaged in my work. Uh, and there were times that I, I thought that I must go back. What am I doing here? I must go back. I couldn't find a way how to contribute to my new environment. Uh, everything except for the conflict in my country was out of my context, you know? And though sometimes making theater where the students helped, helped to uh, uh, um, help me to find myself in this exile, but the actual act, the actual healer, healer came with the monologues, with the performance of the monologues. Performing uh, those monologues, um, uh, traveling with them uh, uh, through uh, different cities in Norway. Um, engaging in dialogues with audiences, with different audiences inside the theater and outside in the city helped reminding me of, uh, of my capacity, of uh, my capacity of creativity, my capacity of survival, my capacity of resistance, uh, uh, they acquired me kind of a new consciousness about what does it mean to be an, an exile. Uh, uh, it made me realize that a strong voice outside the country can be more powerful and stronger than a few voices under the, the uh, 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 pressure, under the weight of their oppression. And it's how I started to find my way, how to contribute in exile. That's what those monologues have done to me. They are the stories, as Elisabetta said, they are stories taken from the mouth of threatened scholars. Um, I got the permission to, they were, they were adapted into theater, but in my turn, I, I adapted some of them and I added 
details of my own personal story, which uh, intersect in many points with these stories. Uh, so that's the... And you should know that um, the entire piece, it's twice as long, it's actually 58 minutes. And, um, and the second part is very powerful and I, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure whether we can give you the link to, to see it on, on, yeah. on, on YouTube, yes. but you should do it. It's, uh, it's powerful, it's very, it's very disturbing. And, it's, um, and, I, and I think that, the, um, that, that what dominates the first part, which I, I'm very curious what uh, um, Chawit would say about it, but I, but I certainly uh, recognize it in my past, the kind of the, the, the deep sense of guilt of being outside, of being outside while, while your people, while your family, while your friends are stuck there. And uh, um, I, 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 never actually, I never actually knew that it's perhaps easier for them, but uh, that's, a, that's a separate issue. So that, that, that theme which dominates the first part turns into something much more dramatic, which I'm not going to tell you because you should see it. Thank you very much. So uh, maybe uh, we'll uh, ask Joe. It's very same way I feel uh, like you. Since I'm an exile, I feel really guilty because people uh, complain me and they thought like I'm used the politic for my fame, for my popularity. So then I can explain you later on. Then I'm trying to find myself like, and I'm not really happy, it's not easy too. So then I, one day I was just sitting and then I'm just thinking of my friends who are prisoners, political prisoners. They always give me a strength and they always give me a power. So now I just went thinking like, because I'm really depressed here in exile. So then, Oh, they are there. They are struggling, f fighting for their freedom. Why I am depressed, in exile. So then I start to think what I can do. How I can escape from those, you know, I, my feeling, which is like I guilt, I'm, I mean guilty. Then I read their story. Then suddenly I got the idea. Those torture, their real story, is really body works. As I am a performance artist, I found out this is real art. So then I start to research about the torture. Then I start my performance to talk about that, to talk about those people who are struggling for their right, basic right. So then I did this performance piece in New York uh, a couple of years ago to remind those people and to bring voice who could not speak. And what's going on inside Burma? Actually, people really don't know what's really going on inside Burma. So at the time when I stopped this performance, there are over 2,000 political prisoners in the prison. They are dealing every day with the torture. So I choose only six position which I can really do. You know, after the performance, I, you know, two or three days, I really, you know, got the pain. But this is only 10 minutes or eight minutes or 15 minutes I do the performance. But they are dealing every day, every second in prison. So I choose this performance to bring their advice to the audience like here in New York or United States to feel, to see. So that's how I try to escape from my depression or from my, you know, how I feel guilty, you know, being exiled. This is all about my performance. Thank you. So we are having here with us, um, not just two practitioner, artist practitioners, but actually uh, practitioners in the very difficult condition of, of exile. And um, I don't know whether you remember um, yesterday at one of the excellent panels, uh, um, David Chung, uh, Paul Ch uh, Chan was uh, talking about Odysseus and his uh, and his travails and his um, and his uh, the way he dealt with trying to return home, home as uh, as something that was to. Uh, 
that 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 was that 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 was that that was the task he was working on. Um, when I was thinking about you uh, and about your uh, about your uh, um, work art, uh, I was thinking about another another emigre uh, uh, woman um, from Greek mythology, Medea, who ended up in a strange place, who ended up lonely, who ended up. Um, um, who felt the other, uh, and who, um, uh, whose depression led her to uh, uh, unconceivable, unconceivable um, uh, deeds. Um, I wanted to ask you, you are maybe lucky because you have art, and you could, uh, though your art is dangerous, and we know about it, um, and that's one of the reasons that you could not be there. Could you, could you, Comment. Could you, at the first place, perhaps you may like to comment on each other work. But uh, my uh, larger question is uh, um, about uh, the situation of being outside and uh, and doing art. Uh, to what extent, being having the distance to your own place, um, and actually being cut off your own audience, which is very important, particularly when you are talking about about theatre, because you have to, you are using a a foreign language, this is, you have to master it, and you did, of course. Uh, so if you could comment on the, uh, go a little bit further, because you already started, on the situation and condition of, uh, of, uh, of an exile for, for an artist who is, uh, who is um, uh, not only displaced, but, but whose audience is taken away from him, and her in this case. Um, well, it is, as I said, you know, we need, as you, or as you said, that we are blessed that our field is art. And especially for the theater. Through the theater, I find it, you know, it's, it's easier, I think, to reach the people than... Uh, you know, than any other, I don't know, kind of communication. Um, language, uh, yes, language could be a kind of a, a obstacle. obstacle, you know, but uh, it's, um, how, how, because my my being here in the exile, you know, it's a through um, educational institutions. Um, I'm invited by uh, universities to teach theater. Okay, I have students. I have uh, uh, the American students now. What I do is how to transform. What we are working in theater or in any class of drama, how to transform this, uh, the material we work in theater to be a kind of cross-cultural uh, sphere uh, by um, encouraging the American students to think about this drama or um, that piece of theater as a statement. It is a statement on, because I always uh, choose Arab drama uh, to work it with the students. It is a statement on our culture and society and I encourage my American student to find out how it can be at the same time a statement on their society and culture. What are, where we can find these um, intersection, these mutual uh, points, these mutual, uh, uh, yes, uh, bridges, um, by doing this, 
by doing this, you make it, or, or the whole situation becomes easier to you. You can, you know, overcome your own personal problems of feeling this depressed that you are far away from your people and country. But we still feel, I don't know, I'm talking about myself, I still feel the lack of my people, I mean the lack of the people that, um, of my audience, which uh, react differently to what I do or to what I present. Um, and I feel the lack of, why do I do that? Uh, well, why do I do certain work here? I know there are goals, you know, because it's very important to share the stories with American audience or a foreign audience in order to tell them what is going there in our country and to bridge gaps in general, you know, between cultures. But I always feel, especially uh, for the kind of uh, um, director or for the kind of person that I always link myself with or connect myself with uh, very actual events that are taking place in my society. So this is maybe I still feel the lack of it. For me is, um, my body is here, my mind and spirit is in my country, actually, until now. So, but I'm here, so what I can do? So then I found out what I can do at least. I can show you how lucky you are living <laughs> in your own society. You can compare with us who are living under the repression, the kind of countries. So then I just produce my own experience, what I've been through under the military government. So until now, I think I can say my artwork is all about my experience in Burma, how we are living, you know, fear from dictatorship, the fear from. So then, I, I, at the end I found out, oh, at least I can share those value, those things to, to recognize yourself, like how lucky you are. You are in this open society and you are, so then sometimes people really forget how lucky you are, how, I mean, opportunity or how, you know, nice thing around you, in your life, you know, only one reach. But for us, it's so difficult to get to get that level. So that is all about how I contribute my art. To what extent the kind of art you do, which is theater and performance, and per to what extent the art you, uh, the genre within which you are working, which is um, a performance and, 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 and drama, but in your case also performance art and installation, which, which you know, they kind of intimately related, but this is this new addition, this new way of thinking about visuality, which includes body and space. To what extent that kind of art um, may appear more dangerous for the, for, the, for the authorities, for the power, for the powers of the world? To what extent the the fact that you are doing performance art and installation and theater makes, uh, uh, threatens the power. Um, I'm, I'm really trying to, to find out the relationship between the, the, the form that you are using, um, which, is not, um, which, is, which is not a flat canvas, right? And, um, and the danger that is uh, perceived, the way it is perceived as a, as a threat or a danger to the power. Do you mean, uh, I want to make just sure that you want um, 
through the genre we do or, or the theater in general? Why, why theater in general yes. can, yes, or art, you know? Well, uh, theater, uh, mm, it's, it's dangerous and it, it uh, uh, represents a kind, uh, uh, kind of threat uh, to authoritarian, especially regimes, because, uh, um, because the audience um, uh, which uh, being or, or being uh, uh, unified in a communal context, seeing or watching the same thing at the same time, uh, turn into a collective crowd uh, that acquires uh, similar uh, awareness, similar, uh, similar uh, consciousness about their conditions, and, uh, and beside, uh, it's very. Uh, uh, it's one thing to hear, to read about an incident, about a genocide. It's uh, quite different to see it visualized through theater, through actors, since uh, the actors. Uh, living actors uh, uh, on the stage act and speak to live audience um, uh, makes the impact of those actors so tremendous, very huge on the uh, audience because uh, of the immediacy and urgency of this art. Um, the and in direct, the society, in which the yes, public the space is not exactly. allowed, this is the only space. Absolutely. And the direct contact with the essence, I would say, the essence of the actor, uh, uh, the choices the actor does in words and gestures and intonations are what make or what make exactly what make going to theater, a living experience. And living experience is always dangerous. dangerous. Yeah, that is all about, if you put the canvas on the wall, the people have to go there, and have to see there. And, but the, with the audience, as I am a performance artist, I can deliver my message directly to your heart, to your ear, then people to people, people to people. The authority always afraid people. That's why I really liked the performance art for my practice to you know, share my experience. That's all about why we use a performance, why they afraid like those kinds of art practice like performance or theater or comedian or you know, so because people to people. That's only one, yeah. You also use your own body, just very quickly only, if you can comment on it, because it's a space around you, but it's also your own, your own body that you are using yeah. to... Yeah, very life. So very fresh and, you know, very solid. You're giving to the audience, you know, right away in this space, in this moment, in this time. Then those people carry, spread, people to people. Then, you know, this But really, then you cover yeah. it with drawings. <laughs> you will see the, 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 my performance, you know, many legs on my legs, hands on my hands, and faces on my faces. Means I'm standing here, but not alone. Thousand people with me because I bring those voices. But you will see only me, but actually not. So That's there are all hundreds the, of feet on yes, your legs, yeah. and they are. So I used to draw the, like many feet. So, but you, when you look at me alone, but actually no, thousand people behind me or with me at the same time. That's what I want. Let's open it to the audience. Let's open it uh, for questions that you might have, to uh, either presented work or the, or the remarks that you that you heard. Uh, we hardly, hardly can see it. Yes. Here is Arian. Yes, let me just give you that. Sure. 
My a question to you is because there is now some softening and changes in Myanmar, uh, and I, I gather... Officially it's, since 2011, right? Yeah, and, and that now since it's uh, become okay to use the term Myanmar and no longer refer to the country as Burma, I, I just wonder uh, whether your uh, art and your uh, performance, which refers to the military dictatorship, whether now things have changed significantly so that you could go back. I know that you're, uh, I'd, I'd like just to hear what you have to say about that. Okay. Yes, <clears throat> actually I can go back now. I'm even uh, uh, apply for the travel documents. But yes, people are thinking like Bama is change. But we have a question, change for whom? For the people? For themselves? Because they draw the constitution for two decades. The finally, an elected 25% the military sitting, you know, in the parliament, the 25%. So those all things you can see, you know, clearly. So for me, is yes, I can do some artwork, but I even the bring some of my friends, uh, what she really say, this is the very reason um, Lee happening. One of my friends who is a performance artist and he organized the International Performance Art uh, Festival in Rangoon uh, last year. And he invited uh, international artists, including the Malaysian artists, the Taiwan artists. But finally, they tried to do it in the public area. Finally, this, they were stopped by the police, and those Malaysian artists were deported. Why happened those things? After 2011, they had say, saying, we lift the censorship, and we are giving you the f freedom of expression or whatever they are saying. Elections. But what happening, those things? Why happen those things? And another thing, just happening in 2014, and my friend who is a Natalia, uh, she was curate, she's a curator and now she works for the local uh, gallery. So she mentioned like, however, there are worrying signs of backsliding in newfound artistic freedoms. Johnston said that members of the special branch police visited TS1, uh, that's a gallery, to a performance art exhibition last month. I told them there would be 10 women performing for 15 minutes each, but I didn't know what they would be doing. The point of performance art is that you're not supposed to know, she said. And then she said, I'm really shocked and depressed about what's happening, that Bama could be returning to the old ways, Johnston said. That's in 2014. So that's maybe my answer. I, I want to thank you for the wonderful uh, videos that you showed, the very powerful work. And the one question I have for you, and this comes uh, in part from last night's uh, conversation uh, by Ai Weiwei, is that you have. Uh, not mentioned how the internet has played a role in disseminating your works, especially to your home countries. And I, I would really appreciate some comment on the power of the internet to reach an audience that otherwise wouldn't be able to access your work. Thank you. Um, yes, internet had played a very big role, especially now in uh, uh, the Syrian uprising in particular. Um, uh, it helps uh, uploading uh, the 
different uh, activities which were taking place in streets, whether they were uh, kind of, uh, um, uh, because Syrian people um, uh, uh, resorted to some kind of popular theatrical forms in their uh, demonstrations, one such form called Al Arada. In this form, uh, it's, uh, you know, as, as a style, this Al Arada as a style um, include uh, the enunciations of phrases, uh, questions by leading uh, a singer, it's followed by answers to the questions by the uh, audience. Mm, uh, other uh, kind of uh, uh, artwork, uh, applauding all these uh, 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 work, uh, artwork in the internet uh, helped uh, uh, informing uh, other uh, uh, places, other uh, 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 fellow protesters and uh, residing in other uh, uh, localities and regions to what is happening and make a kind of unity and, uh, 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 and, and shared sensibility about the agreed uh, purpose, the agreed goal. So it, it really, it unites. For example, if I want to talk about exactly the uh, Syrian case, it unites the, I mean, the, the internet, mm, the Syrian uh, 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 different parts, the different uh, the, the, the demonstrators uh, in, in different parts of Syria, and one goal uh, which was identified with Syria's struggles for freedom. And that was captured in many videotapes. I don't know if some of you is, uh, are um, uh, uh, familiar with these. Uh, some of which uh, 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 of these videotapes were uh, turned into uh, iconic songs that was used in uh, uh, the uprising. Yeah, is this working? Yeah. Um, I had a question. Uh, first of all, I, I'm really glad that your art is a tool for organizing as well as education. I don't want to reduce your art to only that function. But uh, I work for a project called Burma Task Force. Uh, so we're very aware of the ongoing challenges, the very serious challenges. Uh, Burma has 135 ethnicities, and there's a lot of um, just uh, manipulation in the on upcoming, uh, you know, the uh, planning for the upcoming elections this year, but also manipulations of the national census. Exactly. And, and many other tricks to keep certain ethnic groups uh, really persecuted and marginalized. So it's, it's uh, you know, after the uh, so-called opening of the Soviet Union, uh, the oligarchs swept in and took over and took over power and money. Uh, so you see similar gold rush uh, happening, uh, which begins to implicate uh, international investors, too, in, into uh, some of the abuses. So it's very complicated. And the, system, the question of the Rohingya, uh, which not all uh, Burmese want to accept, but they're terribly uh, treated. Um, so I wanted to ask about the uh, divisions and how one bridges divisions at home. Syria is divided uh, in many respects um, along certain lines. Um, that goes back a ways. I've been to Syria, I've been to Damascus and other places. Um, and that's the case also in Burma. So how does one uh, get your message through past those divisions? And have they come up? Have you gotten any pushback? Have you gotten any hostility from any of your audiences? Thank you. It's hostility. So Bama is not really <laughs> uh, so many problem 
with the ethnic uh, issue, the how the government handling, and also the religious uh, conflict. So for me, if, as I'm living in exile, it's very hard to, hard to say how the government is handling those kind of uh, things. What I think is they just want to create those things to you know, take time for the election. That's, what, that's my opinion. I never trust them. So I really have a doubt why they're not, I mean, solving those problem like properly. That's my question. I have also a question, so, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't so uh, clear to the uh, question. So exactly. I understand, I, uh, if I understand you well, is that the, 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 the thing is, the, the Syria is in a somewhat different situation, but the challenges are not over, even if the, if the officially or superficially, the, 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 the ground has been renamed or reconfigured, and, and it is in a kind of transitional uh, situation. I think that there are two different situations. Syria is at war, and it's dramatic, it's dramatic and tragic, and it's difficult even to, I think, conceive how, um, in, to what extent the art and the artist has a role in this very bleak uh, yes. um, That's scene. Why, exactly. That's why, exactly, that's why. You may think that art and artists should or could be able to to open up the space for debate and for critique, yeah. except we just have learned from you and before that it's and that 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 unfortunately um, that is not necessarily the case that the public space is not open for the artists. Yeah, while while in Syrian case it's very difficult, you know, especially uh, especially lately uh, with uh, all this. Uh, complicated, uh, uh, I don't know, the, the, the uh, uh, different uh, attractions that are uh, playing on the ground. Um, but in the first year, in the first uh, 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 a year and a half, art has uh, uh, done a very good job there and, and uh, uh, in the uprising. And it could really, through certain ways, the internet was one of them, to reach the people and to encourage and to inspire. Well, I'm not assuming, I'm not assuming a direct um, kind of impact exactly uh, uh, b between the art and the change, the art and the revolution, no. But what it does, what art does, that it inspires a kind of critical uh, thinking. It inspires a kind of to open up questions, to start questioning what is happening. So it's a, a, a art and literature and theater uh, 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 open the mind of the people to their political situations. That what? That's really interesting because that's very much the point I wanted to, to talk about. I um, have the pleasure and honor to work with a, a company in exile in London, uh, Belarus Free Theatre. And they're quite unique because they've got their artistic team are in exile in London whilst their company members remain performing underground in Belarus in extraordinarily constrained conditions. The KGB really do everything they can to deny the company oxygen. They are constantly being moved on from where they can perform, rehearse and study. Um, when I saw them in Minsk in a performance um, in December, they were performing in a tiny private apartment. Um, which is the only place they really could could use and even that they have now been moved on from that on the pretext that they're causing a disturbance to the neighbors or whatever but it, the KGB will just sort of give these very spurious reasons for um, their space being no longer available to them. Um, I think the interesting thing was many many interesting things about a fascinating company who small plug they are going to be in New York in um, April at La Mama uh, with a fantastic piece about um, 
capital punishment. And I think that's sort of the point I want to make. They, um, there's capital punishment in, in Belarus, um, and there's also capital punishment in the United States. And what they, what they do is they sort of, they are increasingly expanding their, their view as artists and looking at the way in which art can open people's minds, as you've just exactly saying, not only to the situation in another country, but the situation in one's own country. And what they're doing very interestingly in London um, is uh, turning their sort of gaze, if you like, onto the local situation and greatly surprised by the extent of self-censorship that they're seeing in the arts in, in the UK and some of their expectations of art in the free world um, having been somewhat challenged and surprised. And um, uh, so uh, they're actually turning their sort of critical eye onto the local scene. And I just wondered if, if and with that particular perspective, I suppose, of being an outsider, um, but also having come from somewhere very constrained into a freer society, I wonder if you'd had any sort of artistic responses to that or how you might answer how you as an artist feel the value of your voice to critique your environment as an exile, and if that's something that you... Immediate your immediate environment, your local environment. Of, environment. Yeah, thank you. In other words, living here, do you see a challenges which could be, um, and questions, and questioning, and probing that could be directed towards this society, which, is, which had welcomed mm -hmm. us, uh, which we love, but at the same time, we may, uh, may like to, yeah. to, to ask questions. And those might be difficult questions. You know, when you say like critic and those kind of words is really difficult for me because we are really under the re uh, regime like 60 years, our education is really zero, like, like parrot education. So that's my real challenge once I'm in exile. Because my, you know, our practice is not like that. It's really, really different, totally different, black and white. Here is like people are really more discussion, more debate. We have no debate at all, no practice about, you know, cr you know, criticize, you know, critic. We don't have an art critic. We don't have an art historian. So, so once I'm here, I have that challenge. The people c like ask me question and I like, you know, we, are, we used to zip our mouth. So, so I have to start, you know, all every like single very basic thing to practice myself. So when the, 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 you ask me the how, so inside Burma, the people really, you know, we just wake up. So we just, you know, we don't know really what we have to do. Universities in were this closed there in 1988. Like so <laughs> this is really, you know, the situation we are facing, so. So it's so very hard for me. <laughs> I don't I think critiques is actually not one of my words. I mean, I just mean as an artist, a response, mm -hmm. a sort of, it, I don't really mean critiquing in, a, in an intellectual, you know, in, in an okay. academic sense. Sorry, that was. That was <laughs> it's just big, big uh, words for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my response to, um, well, um, the um, milieu that we uh, uh, go through, it's uh, you know, intellectual, it's professors, it's university professors who are um, really um, knowledge people, so um, uh, I don't uh, find any um, a problem, con uh, I mean, to communicate, but, uh, but when it comes to wider, uh, audience. Um, I feel that I'm always challenged in uh, mm, mm, answering, responding to some questions um, uh, uh, that make mm, big difference between the actual reality that is happening or in Syria and the American media, you know, because those people when come and when they based, they base their questions on what their media give them, okay? On what they have heard from the, from the media, which is in many cases, uh, it lacks kind of accur accuracy, yes. 
Uh, so this always is my challenge here in the country, in the United States. How to, not to convince, but how really to find a good justification or evidences enough to be able to stand, you know, or, or, or to help me in uh, <laughs> expressing the English language, to, to be able to um, not confront, not confront, Yes, to articulate my answer or my responses in a way that you are uh, 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 facing a whole um, uh, media system, you know, it's not an easy thing. I don't know if I was clear to, does that make sense? Yeah. When I saw first your uh, installation, which is very multi-layered because it's a performance, but it's also there are also words and the, on the background backdrop of the text, there are those drawings of those positions of the tortured positions position, positions that you um, that you then enacted. When I saw it first, I thought that it 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 does uh, address some of the worries and questions that we have in this country, which also have to do with the very, with the very uh, fact of, uh, of uh, involvement of our government involved in, in tortures. Uh, I'm reminded that the time is uh, out, and uh, I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Naila Atrash, and Cho Eat, and uh, I want to thank you. Thank you for your words and for your questions and join us after lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.